everybody, it's George the Tech. I'm back. A long-awaited review for you guys today. Sorry it's been so long. I've been bad, bad, bad at keeping a constant flow of new content for you, so I apologize right now for that. So hopefully this is something you've been waiting for. I know I have, and a lot of you who paid into the Indiegogo campaign over four years ago for this product, you've been waiting to get your hands on, try and hear and play with the Sentrance Mixer Face. And I've got that right here, the Sentrance Mixer Face R4, right here in the box. So let's do a quick unboxing and see, so you can see what this thing looks like. Nice packaging. It's the way it goes these days. No more, no more plastic blister wrap. You know, we need to have nice packaging these days. And let's see what's inside when you open it up. Here we go. One thing that's cool is the manual. Yeah, that's it. That is the manual. That's what you're going to get with your mixer face. They don't, over explain there's not a lot of detail they just give you the basic information there's a, a somewhat of an assumption that you know a little bit about recording if you've bought one of these but if not of course reach out to me and i will get you up to speed but the mixer face r4 has really great layout very well designed well thought out controls this thing went through a lot of design iterations and so the final design of this thing is really fantastic it's got line level input for mixing in something from the outside if you want to monitor something else in your mix. Combo jacks. It's got headphone output. That's stellar. Really great headphone output. USB audio input. That's the USB connection to your computer or your tablet or iPad, which I'm going to de demonstrate. USB charging so that the unit can be powered from USB while it's being used with an iOS device because iOS does iOS devices like the iPad and the iPhone do not supply enough power. So this can, thing can be powered from a USB power supply of your own, if your own supply, you have to provide that yourself. Or it can be charged and then run off the uh, battery internally. It's charged through that same jack. Phantom power, the ability to mono monitor in mono so you only hear uh, you hear the mics that are on both channels one and two in both ears. A line output level switch, which is going to be huge for people that want to use this thing with video cameras. You can you can basically knock the line output level way down to avoid clipping your camera input on a DSLR or an older video camera. And then your charging in uh, charging indicator and your power button, and that's it. And the back has kind of a quick start guide to tell you how to get up and running. So let's get into it. So here's the unit itself. As you can see, I've already used this thing. Some of the settings have already been adjusted on it. Um, I used it to record a podcast a few weeks ago. I do a show called The Pro Audio Suite and used it with great success to, to record an episode of the podcast. If you listen to the latest one that we put out about Source Connect, uh, you don't hear me that much on that episode, but what you do hear of me was recorded through this mixer face R4 right here. Um, so you've got your two inputs, combo inputs, so they'll use XLR or quarter inch. And then riding alongside them are two balanced outputs. And because the unit's so small, the balanced outputs are on mini jacks. So you're thinking, what? How is that balanced? Well, a mini jack can be stereo, and a stereo tip ring sleeve mini jack can be adapted to a balanced quarter inch or an XLR, depending on what gear you're plugging it into. So you just have to have the right cables, not a big deal. And then on this side is your business end of the unit for connecting your headphones and things like that. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Let's see if I got a charge on it, first of all. Hold down the power button flashes at you. What does that mean? That means it's out of charge. It needs juice. So let's go ahead and hook up this uh, included cord to a power supply. And I've got a couple different ways I can do this, but since it's handy, I'm going to plug it into a USB cord I have already hanging off my rack over here. A micro USB, completely standardized kind of connection. You can use the one that it came with or you can use your own micro USB and I'm plugging it into a power supply I have over here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the 
charge jack. There we go. And there you have it. Now it's indicating that it's getting power. So it's got power supply now. So we don't have to worry about the battery being charged. But while it's plugged in, it's going to charge. Now I can go ahead and power it on. So it's ready to check out. Now we can plug in a standard XLR mic. Any kind of professional microphone will work. Um, right now I'm recording through my usual, usual signal chain into the computer. But once we have this thing up and running, I'll go ahead and record the rest of the audio from the demo through this. So you can hear what this unit sounds like. My signal chain goes through some processing. So when I patch over to the R4, you're going to hear it basically raw. You're going to hear it in the rawest format possible, just what comes off the R4. I'm going to plug it into one of my favorite, basically stunt mics, I call it. This is the uh, Audio-Technica AT-875R. Really good mic for the money. Sounds great. It's a great mic to have in your road kit. I've got it on an aftermarket shock mount and a little tripod stand here. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And I'm going to plug my headphones in. There we go. And, of course, we have to have something to record too. But the nice thing about this unit is it acts as a standalone device. You can use this as just a mic preamp and monitor mixer for a, a recording rig like a, like, a, like a video camera, like a DSLR camera. So you don't have to plug it into a computer. As long as it's charged or has a power supply going to it, it's a standalone device. does not require recording to a computer at all, which is really cool. It also has a quarter 20 thread on the back. So that means you can screw this into any kind of standard camera rig, camera mount, a cheese plate, grip, whatever you got, and run this right along your, your gun and go uh, camera rig. So really versatile unit. But for, for today's purposes, I'm going to record into my iPad. Because a lot of you buying one of these are probably going to want to be recording through an iPad. This is probably the reason you want something like the mixer face is you want that capability to record into the iPad. So let's get that set up. And I'm, I'm using with the high pass filter engaged because I feel like most of the time with voiceover and voice work, having the low pass filter or having the high pass filter on is really helpful because generally there's going to be background noise when you're working on remote and location recordings, which is generally what this is designed to be used for. And filtering that out with a high pass filter obviously can be really, really helpful. I also have the ability to blend my monitor so I can hear more me or more of what comes back from the computer with this knob. And there's one of those for each microphone. Since I'm only using one mic, the settings on this side of the unit, at least these two, are irrelevant for our demonstration. The only knob that I'm going to be playing with today is on that side is the monitor level. So my headphone monitor is here, my blend is here, and my gain is here. AUX 3.4, as I mentioned earlier, is just the ability to bring in another signal from another outside source. So how do we plug it into an iPad? Hmm? Well, because it comes with a micro USB cable, it's not going to plug and play. You do have to buy another accessory. So you're gonna have to get yourself one of these, a lightning to USB camera adapter. They're about 30 bucks from Apple. Much too much for what they are, but you know, that's Apple for you. So let me, I just got this one actually brand new. Let's go ahead and yank it out of the box, plug it into my iPad. Make sure your iPad has a charge on it because once you plug it into the camera adapter, it you can't charge it and use it with the camera adapter at the same time. It's one or the other. So you gotta have a charge on your iPad or your iPhone. And I'm gonna use my favorite Twisted Wave. Now, I haven't plugged it into the unit yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut off Twisted Wave again because I wanna make sure that it's going to detect the external microphone. So I'm going to use the cord that it came with. And 
that is going to go from the iPad adapter or the iPhone adapter into this USB jack on the other side. That's the audio jack. Okay. Now we have those two set up. Once I start Twisted Wave Recorder and create a new document, I'll do a 44.1, but it can do up to 192. I think, it, I think it can record up to 192, but I'm going to record a 44.1 for this demo, mono. Ah, so this is a good sign. So the software has detected that something is plugged into it. So that means it's now going to be able to record from the external source. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to hit record. Now, let's. how do we know for sure it's not using the built-in mic on the iPad, but using an external source? The easiest way to tell is just tap on the iPad with your fingernail, like this. Then tap on the mic. Yeah, there you go. Pretty obvious at this point, we're actually recording through the mixer face itself. So this is a great scenario where the mixer face is gonna shine because Again, as long as you've had your mixer face charged, you now have a completely cordless portable rig you can have with you in the car. You can have it on the road. As long as you've got a device to record to, you're fine. iOS devices work great. Android is something I haven't tested yet, but as long as you have an on-the-go cord, which is a cable that goes from a USB jack on the iPhone, uh, an Android phone to USB, the device should work perfectly with it. Um, I'll let you know, and if, and if any of you guys have a chance to demo that and try it on your Android devices, comment down below and let me know what devices you're using so we can figure out what works and what doesn't. But this was really designed with a tremendous amount of effort put into it to work with the iPhone. In fact, that is one of the reasons it took so long to make it to market, was to get the approval and have it perfectly completely 100% compatible with iOS devices. So most of you are probably gonna to wanna to use it with an iOS device. So iPad mini, this is an iPad mini, an original iPad mini. I got this iPad mini used for $60. So you can get an iPad mini for 60 bucks and start recording with your mixer face on the road. I think the iPad mini for Twisted Wave is great, but you know, the iPhone's going to be awesome too. The ability to have something that portable that you can bring with you is going to be awesome. So, you know, this thing's got oodles of gain. It's got an overload indicator that you can see I'm kicking, I'm actually kicking into overload here from time to time. And my microphone is over a foot away from me. So you can see it's got oodles of gain, right? Plenty of gain. So it's really, really versatile in terms of its ability to have enough gain to drive um, all condenser mics and most of your dynamic mics. Um, you may have trouble with an SM7 for voiceover work because that thing just needs gobs of gain. You might need to use that with a cloud lifter, but generally it's going to provide enough gain for just about any common voiceover microphone and do it beautifully. So as you can see, it's a great package. It's compact, it feels well-made. It definitely is up to par with the quality you expect from Sentrance. If you've, if you've used the MicPort Pro and you know how good it sounds, this thing's gonna sound at least as good, if not better, than the MicPort Pro. Um, it's really fantastic. And again, I can't forget to tell you and remind you that the headphone jack is fantastic. It has an incredible amount of output, really good signal, really powerful. So you really can't go too wrong with this unit. They actually make another version of the mixer face with a built-in recording function as well. So if you like the idea that you can have a backup recording device with you, that's always with you no matter what, to back up on long sessions, or maybe if you're doing audio for video and you wanna have a second system to record, the other unit is exactly the same size, it just adds a micro SD slot and a record button. So that same unit can be a recorder as well. So that takes it up another notch in terms of price. I'll have the prices down below here, but it really is quite remarkable. So 
the Sentrance Mixer Face R4, it's really up to par. It's it's really nicely made. Sound quality is fantastic. You know, it's it was I think it was worth the wait if this is the kind of product you're looking for. They really put a lot of thought into it, even giving you a nice quick start guide physically attached to the base of the unit. Almost nobody does that. It's really they really thought about the kind of people using this and the fact that they're going to need a little bit of guidance to make sure this thing is ready to go for them when they pull it out of the box. Doesn't have to work with just Mac OS either. And in fact, right on here, it tells you it's iOS, Mac OS, and Linux plug and play adaptable. And if you're using Windows, you just get their, their driver, their USB driver at Sentrance.com. So there you have it. That's the Sentrance Mixer Face R4. And if you want to go get one, my buddy Harlan Hogan over at VoiceOver Essentials, he's got them right now. He's got them in stock, ready to ship, and he'll take good care of you. So this has been George the Tech, and I've really enjoyed bringing you this product review. If you'd like more reviews like this, please comment. Let me know that you want them, and I'll keep the products coming in for review. Um, I like doing it. I just have to make the time and get myself into a rhythm doing these again. I promise I will keep working on that. If you want to know more about me, you can find me on Facebook. I'm George the Tech on Facebook. Um, you can find me on Twitter at George the Tech. But most importantly, if you need services, you need support, setting up processing, whatever it is, georgethetech.com is my place on the web. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you guys around the web. This has been George the Tech. Take it easy. Bye.